Welcome back to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale, and in this video, we're going to give you the stats for our solar PV system here in the UK for the month of March 2022. If you're new to the channel, I want to know full details of the 9 kilowatt solar PV array that we have here. Please click on the card above. That's a separate video, give you all the details on the panels we're using, the inverters, the angles, and everything. But let's jump straight into it in terms of how the system production has worked for March 2022. So the system has produced 712.81 kilowatt hours of electricity, and we managed to consume 95% of that. So 678.38 kilowatt hours of energy was used and we exported 34.44 kilowatt hours. Again, if you're new to the channel, we try and maximize all of our solar generation, either putting that into our electric vehicles for charging, charging up our Tesla Powerwall 2, so we can use the energy when the sun goes down, or heating our hot water with our My Energy Eddy. So we do try and minimize anything we export. We're also fortunate to get right in at the end of the feed-in tariff, so we get paid for deemed export, whether we actually export it or not anyway. In terms of how much the house consumed, uh, me and my wife, we work from home, we've got multiple servers and computers running all the time. So we are a generally high energy usage household. So, you know, we consume a lot, but uh, we import pretty much all of it off peak. So in terms of our house consumption, we consumed 1.49 megawatt hours of electricity, but we only exported 810 kilowatt hours of energy so again we're going to that a little bit more detail so we're only for the month of march anyway we're only paying five pence per kilowatt hour for all the energy we're importing so still results in a relatively low bill in terms of how this march 2022 compared to the others we can see that on the screen right now um so not too bad it was the second best month uh, or second best march we've had since we had the solar system, but 2020 is still the best March we've had since we had the solar installed. So if we call out a couple of kind of the best and worst days for our solar over the month of March, our best day was on the 19th of March, where we generated 41.778 kilowatt hours electricity. And the worst day in March was actually the second, where we only generated a measly 2.235 kilowatt hours of electricity. So what does that mean in terms of our kind of payback and how the system is performing? We do a video every year or at least on the anniversary year uh, of our solar install which is around September time but if we look at our um, payback based on the feed-in tariffs and how much we save and how to buy electricity and that cost of buying electricity we mentioned at the end of the video some of the changes to the My Energy Go tariff we're on obviously that's just accelerating our payback period obviously with the energy crisis and the bills kind of rocketing up. So in terms of our feed-in tariff and how much we get paid for the generation, we get paid £29.72. In terms of our deemed export, they assume that we are going to export 50% of it even though we don't, but we get paid £19.85. And in terms of the electricity we generated and used, which meant we then didn't have to buy it from the grid, that saved us £93 and seven pence. So that means a total of 142 pounds and 65 pence in terms of solar generation benefit that goes into paying back our solar PV. If we weren't on the feed-in tariff and we were gonna get paid for that little bit of ex energy we exported, we would have got paid one pounds 89 for export. Again, as mentioned, we try to minimize any export anyway. Okay, so we look at how we used some of the energy. Obviously a lot of it's going into the house, but then we break it in, down into three areas. How much went to heating hot water, how much went to charging our electric vehicles, and how much went into our Tesla Powerwall 2. Now, unfortunately, I say this nearly every month. One, because maybe I'm unorganized, but also I'm frustrated with the My Energy app. I forgot before I went to bed uh, on the last day of March to go outside and take a picture of the front of the Zappi and go into my immersion cupboard and take a picture of the front of the Eddy, which basically is how I can see how much we've used of energy for the month, both um, from solar and from the grid. If you forget, the app and the website doesn't provide this breakdown for you. I don't know why it doesn't do it. Um, so I can't tell you the actual breakdown. All I can tell you is how much went 
electricity we used for heating up water and charging our cars, not the split of how much was green or not. So for the My Energy Eddy, so heating up hot water, we used 229.9 kilowatt hours of electricity to heat hot water. Now I can tell you just from looking at the graph that a lot of that was from solar um, because we only use six kilowatts typically from the grid off peak per day to go uh, into heating hot water that tends to see us through and then for our electric car charging we used 369.6 kilowatt hours of electricity again to charge our cars some of that will be from solar uh, but probably most of it in march would have come from the grid because again we're starting to get better weather but not quite good enough to be doing the majority of our charging on solar right now then in terms of our powerwall 2 i did actually spot something last month but after i published a video that i can kind of work out how much of the energy that we got from the powerwall was from solar versus from the grid right down the bottom there it gave the little kind of percentage split so i can try and work it out so for our tesla powerwall 2 we had 408 kilowatt hours of energy that we got out of our Powerwall 2 uh, to be able to use when obviously solar wasn't available. 212.16 kilowatt hours of that came from solar. So 52% of our energy from our Powerwall 2 came from solar and 48% coming from the grid, which was 195.84 kilowatt hours of energy coming from the grid again off peak that went into our power wall too so we could use it during peak times now, as i mentioned at the beginning as with everybody unless you've got a your current fix energy prices are going up for me at the end of march our feed-in tariff uh, ends on the optimus go so from april or i think very end of march uh, we're on the new revised uh, prices for the Optimus Go. So let me just talk to you about what the changes are for those two tariffs and then finish off with our electricity bill which does include a little bit of that new tariff which will be interesting moving forwards. So based on the new Optimus Go tariff this is what we had before and uh, moving forward. So previously we had 13.72 pence per kilowatt hour during peak times and then five pence per kilowatt hour off peak and a standing charge of 25 pence per day. Moving forward on the new Octopus Go, we're paying 30.78 pence per kilowatt hour during peak times, 7.50 pence uh, for off peak times and a standing charge of 25.08 pence per day. That still is a great tariff to be on in my opinion. So in terms of what that means in terms of price increase, so a significant increase in peak costs, 124% increase. In fact, the off-peak costs increased by 50% and the standing charge for the day rate is kind of neither here nor there at 0.3%. So again, like everybody, energy prices are going up. The advantage that we have is most of our electricity, again, we're using during off-peak. Um, so we're not as impacting obviously because we have the solar and the batteries and stuff so we can minimize electricity costs still but even in our situation that the price is going up and thankfully we just be able to minimize the costs to us so i'll just finish off the video with what our electricity bill was for um, the month of march and kind of what our average price per kilowatt is so for our electricity bill we get billed from the fourth so from the fourth of march to the 28th of March, which is when our existing uh, Octopus Go tariff ended, we um, consumed 585.7 kilowatt hours from the grid, uh, but our average cost, because again, most of it was off peak, we only paid an average price of 5.24 pence per kilowatt hour, which is pretty awesome. But then from the 29th of March to the 3rd of April, we're now on the new Octopus Go tariff with those new increased costs, as mentioned before and so far we'd used 112.8 kilowatt hours uh, in between the 29th of March and the 3rd of April so sneaking into obviously our April uh, use a little bit and our average price now is 8.0 pence per kilowatt hour so a 54% increase in electricity costs based on the new GO tariffs. So I hope that helped any questions you have please feel free to ask them down in the comments I do read them all and try and get back to you 
Um, also, please share with me, you know, where are you based? How has your system performed? Um, you know, it's always good to compare and contrast different people's solar setups and how they're performing across the country and even across the world. If you're a European or international viewer, it'd be much appreciated. But that's it. Take care of yourself. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.